please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. In the past week, there have been uh, two or three instances of auditors qualifying the approval to audited statements of companies by raising red flags and saying they are not confident that some subsidiaries of the company can continue as a going concern. Auditors of Reliance Naval and Reliance Infra made these observations last week and this week, uh, HCC's auditors raised some red flags on the accounts of its subsidiary, Lawasa. So what we are asking today is, why this increase in the number of instances where auditors are refusing to fully endorse subsidiaries' accounts? What are the implications of these qualifications for uh, investors and bankers? And uh, more importantly, are we going to see more such instances? Joining us to discuss these questions are former ICAI presidents, that is the Charter Accountants Body, Amarjit Chopra, Ved Jain, Manoj Fadnes. Also joining me will be former executive director of SEBI, Jane Gupta. But first up, here's my colleague Anisha with exactly what the auditors have said in recent cases. Anisha. Well, yes, Latav, today HCC was down about 25% in trade after auditors raised red flag regarding one of the group companies, Lavasa Corporation. Now, Lavasa has been under SDR since last year, but this is the first time the auditors have really given out a qualified opinion. Now, they have raised three qualifications as far as Lavasa Corporation is concerned. First, they say that there are outstanding creditors to the tune of around 3,000 crores, but since they have got no direct confirmation from these lenders, they are not able to vouch whether that number that the company is reporting in its book is correct or not. They have a similar view as far as the carrying value of some capital work in progress is concerned because they say that in since earlier years they have been carrying around 1200 crores as the carrying value of capital work in progress but there is no way for them to ascertain whether this value is an asset that they should show in the books or not. And lastly, they mentioned that the overall financial systems and internal controls of the company are weak. Now, they make other observations as well regarding the current liabilities of the subsidiary being higher than the current assets. They talk about how the net worth of the company has eroded and that is why it raises a material uncertainty regarding the going concern of the subsidiary itself. Now, this is something that we also heard from the auditors in the case of Reliance Naval as well as Reliance Infrastructure. Now, while for Reliance Naval, it was for their business, for Reliance Infrastructure, it was regarding the subsidiary subsidiaries Reliance Naval as well as the metro business of the company and they said that there is a material uncertainty regarding the going concern. They talked about how current liabilities are more than assets, how net worths have eroded, how they are winding up petitions that have been filed by the creditors. So all these really made them uh, question the going concern of the company and that's why Lata it's very important going forward to keep a very close eye on the auditors comment of what they are saying about the companies in this quarter as well. Back to you. Okay, well, actually, uh, if you can stay on Anisha, you know, uh, I went through all those uh, uh, auditor reports. Uh, can you quickly explain the legalese here? You know, there are uh, uh, qualifications given and then they say, but we are, it, this, this does not modify our opinion. And then they use things like emphasis of matter. <laughs> uh, if you can just go through the uh, jargon. Well, guess, Lata, to make things easier, let's pick up the analogy of a classroom wherein the auditor can be the teacher and the companies can be the students. Now, audit report is basically telling you the report card of how the accounts of the company have been made. Now, broadly speaking, there are two types of auditor's report. One is the unmodified or the unqualified type of report and the other is the modified, which means that the auditor has concerns about the way the accounts have been presented. Now, further, it is, uh, you know, bro broken down in terms of without emphasis of matter and with emphasis of matter. Now, as far as unqualified report is concerned, that means that the auditor does not have very material concerns about the company. If it is without emphasis of matter, this is something only the top students get which do not provide any uh, you know, problem to the teacher. But the other type of it which is with emphasis of matter and that is what you were asking me about. Now these are type of concerns that uh, are, are important for the company and for the shareholders but that necessarily does not mean that the company is not providing uh, the accounts in the correct manner. The example can be contingent liability of let's say a suit which is filed on the company. Now the company might have mentioned it in the footnote 
but if it is very important and material for the company, the auditor might mention it as the emphasis of matter. The other type of report which you don't want to get is the modified report. Now, the first one of it is with qualifications, wherein the, ma the auditor believes that there have been misstatements in the account. They are material, maybe not pervasive enough to go through the entire accounts, but there are material misstatements. Case in point can be, let's say, a depreciation method wherein the company has not followed the accounting standards. But that definitely does not mean that the entire accounts of the company or the going concern of the company is it. So that would be a qualified opinion. Other than that is the adverse opinion, which is one of the worst that you can get. That means that the auditor is saying that you have misrepresented your numbers. That is material information as well as pervasive to your accounts. And lastly is the disclaimer of opinion, wherein the auditor says, I have not got enough information. I cannot really form an opinion. And hence, they give a disclaimer of opinion. Okay, that's a lot to remember. So we will keep running those definitions. Uh, uh, Anisha, of course, will come and join me in this Q&A session. But let me uh, invite my guests. Uh, we are being joined by former ICAI, Institute of Chartered Accountants, uh, presidents, Amarjeet Chopra, Ved Jain, Manoj Fadnis, and also by former executive director of SEBI, Jain Gupta. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for joining me. Uh, Mr. Amarjeet Chopra, let me start with you first. Uh, uh, is there any increase or are we just blowing up two instances? No, I, I don't think uh, that these two instances can be treated as uh, too much of an increase. Mm. And I can only share with you uh, that uh, these kind of uh, uh, matters have all been reported even earlier. Mm. I, even if I go back to 30, uh, more than 30 years back, the matters with regard to going concern were raised even in the case of Modi spinning for that particular matter. So I, I think looking at just two or three, I, I may not be able to say that uh, there is too much of an increase, but, but this has come in the last one week. Yes. Probably that, that is what it makes it appear that uh, there is too much of an increase in this. Mm. But uh, three instances in one week, uh, uh, Mr. Chopra, which is what is uh, yeah. uh, concerning investors. Let me go uh, to uh, the former regulator, uh, Mr. Gupta. Uh, three instances of uh, auditors either saying that we are not modifying the opinion, but there is emphasis of matter, or in one case, even qualifying the opinion. Uh, would you say that there, there is an increase in trend? And if yes, why? So first of all, in one word, I will say I am delighted. Okay. Not because there are audit opinions, but I feel that this is a going forward to a transparency and mm. more reliability of the accounts, mm. which is a good thing for all concerned, all stakeholders. Mm. Now, I will agree with Mr. Chopra that it may not signify that there are going to likely to be more increase, but yes, if the transparency comes, mm. and I would say that it is coming of the age of the audit profession because mm. now they are realizing that they are under watch for so long. You remember Mr. Prime Minister's speech on the Chartered Accountant Foundation Day. And then there are a lot of recommendations that have been made in Kotak Committee, mm. where it has been mandated that auditors have to audit the consolidated accounts, they have to give opinion about subsidiary, and all that matters. So, and then they have to give reason for resignation also. Earlier, what used to happen, that they could say the personal reason of unwillingness mm. of all that nonsense but so <laughs> what is happening is this if it is going to increase transparency mm. and if it's going to make them more responsible there could be nothing better for the corporate governance in this country okay. and remember it needed only one TN session to reform the election Absolutely. process and uh, if we had 10 auditors like this mm. today today the auditors are chosen not for their quality work but for their pliability Mm. Now, if the profession turns to the quality, then the priority, okay. then I think we are going okay. to see a very good day. That's a strong statement that you are making and as a former regulator, we'll take it seriously. But uh, really, Mr. Jain, uh, uh, you know, there, uh, sc screws have been tightened. Mr. Gupta referred to the Prime Minister's speech to the ICAI, which was fairly strong, uh, saying that, you know, you help people to evade taxes, not just plan them. But uh, more importantly, you know, after the Nirav Modi case, the screws have definitely tightened. Bankers are feeling the heat like nobody's business. And next to the bankers come the auditors. So do, do you think that the auditors are now raising these flags simply because, I mean, it is very obvious that after, with the uh, Reserve Bank forcing bankers to put the divergence in the public them. domain, uh, the uh, uh, heat will be on them. And that is why these red flags. Do you see this as a trend? 
Okay, we will get uh, with Jen in a minute. Uh, just lost that connection. Uh, Mr. Fadnis, I was going to repeat the same question to you. Do you think regulators have gotten uh, more strict uh, with the RBI publicly asking for divergence announcements? And do you think, therefore, this is a trend and will become a trend? Uh, well, Madam Lata, just to say that uh, the auditors have been, as Mr. Chopra also explained, have been issuing audit reports in accordance with the standards on auditing. And uh, today what we see is, and what has been also happening in the past, is that the auditors have been issuing reports. Maybe, maybe at times in the earlier past they did not get noticed. A few years ago, if you recall, SEBI had constituted a committee mm. and uh, where there were qualified audit opinions, so in those cases, the companies were being asked to restate their financial statements to the extent they were being disclosed in the stock exchanges. So there has been a positive move for the regulators to take note of what is uh, being qualified by the auditors, and that's a healthy trend. Uh, so far as uh, the comments uh, with respect to the uh, specific cases which you mentioned, I mean, it may not be possible to comment on that. But uh, if you appreciate that emphasis of matter and uh, qualification of opinions, you know, qualified audit reports. Mm. So these are uh, technical matters uh, wherein the auditor is expressing uh, emphasis of matter in the sense that there is something which is very important for the investors to understand on which the auditor is not issuing an opinion. So typically like uh, going concern, the concept of going concern is one of the fundamental accounting assumptions. Mm -hmm. Now going concern is based on the promoter's ability to infuse funds in future. So that is something which the auditor cannot comment upon because it's a future event. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, very rightly, the auditors give an emphasis of matter mm -hmm. that they have relied on the uh, going concern concept based on the promoter's ability okay. to infuse the fund. Yep. So these are uh, very correct and technically yeah. right methodologies in which the auditors express their opinion on subject matters. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, can I just add also on the one of the cases which you commented and I had an occasion to see that, mm -hmm. uh, the two companies where you mentioned uh, Reliance Infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So therein, uh, see, uh, we should also keep in mind how the law has evolved. Okay. So Companies Act 2013, before it came into operations, we had Companies Act 1956, yeah. and where there were court schemes, and court schemes uh, permitted with the permission of the Honorable High Courts mm -hmm. to have certain accounting treatment which could be different from the uh, accounting standards. Okay. Okay. So in, if there is a order of the Honorable Court, mm -hmm. so that has to be followed and the auditor cannot qualify. Sure. Now these are cases which are uh, legacy issues okay. where there have been prior to 2013 there were certain court schemes approved okay. as a result of which certain accounting treatments are being followed okay. which are not in consistence with the accounting okay. standards. Okay. Uh, so Fadness, therefore the yeah. auditor is Take an emphasis of matter. Okay. Right, Mr. Fadnis, take your point on that, but I wanted to check something with Mr. Gupta. Uh, Mr. Gupta, you raised the point regarding uh, how resignation was used by one, by the auditors as a tool, and there is there are also been instances where the uh, current auditors just take up the report of the predecessors and say that it was an unmodified report, and they carry forward that view. Also, the company account, uh, company law 2013, just gives you a period of 10 years before you are really uh, needed to change the auditor. Do you think there is a case for even changing the law and maybe bringing down the number of years an auditor is required to be on board see there, there is already law that auditors cannot be there for more than 10 years five hmm. plus five but my issue is i would say that law is not material in this country because you have got so many laws but compliance of that law is very very big issue hmm. and if you see all the time we make law based on some reaction some mishap has happened and the law is created. Right. I would like to see a day mm. when the law gets created on the best practices. Mm. And I would want that auditors, as, as you said, the auditors are the first gatekeepers for the stakeholder yeah, interest. Correct. Yeah. And we have seen a lot of failures. Mm. And I feel that now we are on the mm, right stage track. where auditors are going to change for future because now they have to be answerable to so many things. Mm. And with this NCLT thing, all other things coming up, accounts will become a major issue mm. and if mm. somebody finds that our accounts were not correct, then auditors will be taken to the court. That, that's my point. <laughs> you know, that's the point, Mr. Gupta, which I wanted even... Uh, I'll come back to you. Just get Mr. Jain in now that we have uh, connected to him. Uh, Mr. Jain, 
uh, are uh, you know f recent events now uh, c uh, casting a pressure on auditors both the regulator the reserve bank's insistence on uh, announcing divergence in the public domain the prime minister's speech to the icai uh, uh, the nirav modi case and the uh, you know spotlight on what were the current auditors doing uh, for that branch uh, that bank branch and of course the nclt issue are all these going to make auditor qualifications a trend see that i we, we must need to first appreciate the present state of economy and the situation why this is happening it mm. see the what is the role of the auditor auditor is to report on the state of affair of a company which he is auditing now the two example which you have given where the auditors have given their qualification and have given a qualified report this means that those companies have not been doing well and there are issues because they could not meet the challenges of the what we call economic condition so what the auditor say can look that they as a going concern there have been losses there are issues capital work in progress which i am not able to verify so this is the role of the auditor auditor has to report it so these instances are not increasing because that there something has happened to the auditing profession or okay. there is a pressure on the auditing profession the auditors have given a report based on the current state of affairs mm. i believe the auditing profession since independence i will say the institute came in existence since 1949 has been maintaining very high standards and ensuring that all compliances are done mm. see you look at as on date the chartered accountant which is being produced by the icii mm. is one of the best competitive chartered accountant uh, globally accepted Mm. now issue which arises on corporate governance and other zero governance see you whether it is a nirav modi case it is a punjab national bank case or any other case it is an auditor which is which is this being a security guard which is being a watch keeper he is a person who is reporting it out now even in the nirav modi case till today for the last two months though maybe may issues may have been raised but no, nobody has come forward where the auditors have faulted so the the system which has been faulted and which was the role of the auditor if one can say yes this was the system which was supposed to be checked by the okay. auditor which he has failed and i can accept ki yes there is a failure okay. the issue here is that even in the punjab national bank case today till date mm. there is no where any okay. material or anywhere that this right. was supposed to be done by the auditor and which he okay. has failed to carry out okay. now i give a very generic example because some of the issues have been raised that there is a pressure because there is a media mm. hype created and there have been certain discussion going at at the various level about the auditing profession but i am of the view that so far auditing profession is concerned they are institute is developing accounting yeah. standard and auditing standard okay. Okay. which are dynamic you know, yeah. over a mr jain we are discussing uh, three at least or maybe increasing instances of auditors red flagging uh, some of the statements made in the pnls of uh, uh, leading companies we have been speaking with uh, former icai president amarjit chopra ved jain manoj fadnis and former executive director of sebi mr jain gupta well uh, 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 mr chopra why is it that the auditor qualifications are couched in so much legalese that a common investor cannot understand how many investors will be able to understand the difference between emphasis of matter not modified but qualified i mean why can't it be plain legalese and tell us should we believe the accounts or not you see ma let i i think it's very easy to sit down and criticize something but let's uh, put a hand on heart and uh, find out whether the indian chartered accountants are following the international standards or not if all standards on auditing that the indian chartered accountants are follow, fo following are the international uh, standards on auditing and there also the treatment is absolutely the same the language is the same i think if at all the change has to take place it has to change place first at the international level mm -hmm. and mind it whatever qualifications have been given and as i i think vej ji put it and as uh, manoj ji put it i i will only say one thing that if i am unsure of certain realization myself mm. look, look at the case of uh, the current assets being lesser than the current liabilities or let's take the case of the impairment if the impairment study has not been got conducted who is supposed to get it conducted not the auditor mm. it is only the management the independent directors the audit committee chairman has to be held responsible for that mm. and if the auditor is highlighting this particular fact that i cannot comment upon it rather it should be a ground for the independent directors and the management to look at it and see that it is ensured in the next year 
So what is important to be understood is if a court case is going on, the auditor will not be able to say what is going to be the decision. Mm. Now, next year onwards, you will find the, the further changes even coming in. Because the moment asset uh, 702 comes into play, okay. even all key audit matters, today whatever is there in the notes to accounts or contingent liability, a very significant part thereof, you will start finding in the auditor's report also without qualifying those audit reports. Let's be very okay. clear about it. And that's happening internationally also. Okay. And you, we have to appreciate one thing. Mm. As the economy changes, as yeah. the economy evolves, there are so many things which evolve. Today even, I, I would like to say one thing. Yeah, you have I to be quick, I don't think the sir. role of the SEBI is the same what it was 10 years back. Okay. I, and yes, I'm trying to be quick. Okay. It is not the role of the SEBI, but it was 10 years back. Okay. Similarly, the RBI mm -hmm. is inputting the things differently what it used to do no, otherwise. Sir, that, is the, that is exactly Two my point, sir. Two years back or three years back. Mm. No, that that no, is exactly no, that, that, my that's point, the point, sir. I'm trying to make Regulators, out. See, the MCA, times, the times, Prime Minister, Lata, all of them Lata. are in a different at mode altogether. No, no, I mean, I'm, we are I'm seeing them. You sir, see, you know, we are out of time. Mr. Chopra, we are out of time. Mr. Chopra, we are out of time. Out of time, I have to give 30 seconds to the other participants as well. Mr. Gupta, very quickly. No, no, I, I will only say, statement of the Prime Minister, fine. Yeah. But look at, we, we yeah. are the only institute in the entire country which has been taking action against our own okay. members, even okay. for the lifetime Okay, okay Mr. Chopra. Mr. Chopra, so I'm, I'm not, not on that particular I'm point not pointing right now. Mr. But Chopra, we are, I'm not here to point fingers. Yeah. I'm just asking whether there is a rising trend of yeah. auditors pointing out. Uh, 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 Mr. Gupta, we are actually running out of time. No, I, I uh, will only I'm, say one uh, thing. Mr. Chopra, I'll come back to you later, please. I, I think Mr. Auditor... Chopra, you will have to let me yes, uh, let yes. the others yeah, speak. Okay, okay. okay, Mr. Gupta, uh, last word from you. Uh, do you think the uh, uh, auditors are qualifying reports because of pressure or because the economy is going in a downturn and that is why they had to do this? No, I would say it is a change and welcome change because auditors are under pressure and transparency. And I would request all three of my fellow panelists that they should look their balance sheet and audited accounts of three house limited and see whether they would have given the report that auditors gave. We, without having audit knowledge, we pointed out problems, but audited community did not. So mm -hmm. let them have a look at those balance sheets and see whether they would have given the same report or they would have qualified the account. Okay. That is my question, counter question. And I would say that it is a welcome change and if the auditors change, probably the independent directors will also change because then they also will become under questions. Okay. Well, it will uh, be a cascading effect. Okay. Well, Mr. Fadnis, sir, you have just about 30 seconds. Your thoughts, sir, do you think auditors have become uh, more uh, careful and more proactive in pointing red flags because the entire ecosystem has changed? Well, I don't think that the auditors are under any kind of pressures and because of that they are pointing out these red flags. This is the, how the audit profession okay. has evolved and this is uh, reporting the matters as the auditors come across. Mm -hmm. I agree it is good that the auditors' qualifications are being taken note of and are being okay. discussed. Even emphasis of matter is being discussed on public uh, debates. So that is a good uh, development. Okay. But these are things which are happening even in the past. Okay. Unfortunately, I believe they went unnoticed. Oh, right. Actually, we have completely out of time. Mr. Jain, Mr. Fadnis, uh, Mr. Chopra and Mr. Gupta, thank you very much for joining us in this conversation. Uh, former presidents of ICI maintaining that the audit, uh, audit profession always made these qualifications, they are just getting more notice because uh, people like Gupta and, uh, 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 you know, investor advisory groups are uh, putting the spotlight on them. Well, one doesn't think that this is as simple as that. Clearly, in the last one week, we have had three uh, uh, auditors of leading companies putting in and uh, 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 putting in the public domain some red flags. This looks like a trend uh, in the days to come as more and more accounts and uh, uh, account statements are made public. We will know whether this is uh, going to be a larger trend. And, uh, of course, there's no doubt that it is certainly healthy for investor interest. Thank you very much for watching this uh, special show from CNBC TV 18.